Okay, at least I can hear myself. I hope you can hear me as well. My name is Keith Merrington. On the website, there was a small error that says I am a retired OS2 programmer. It should have said I am retired and I am an OS2 programmer, not a retired OS2 programmer. So you can still buy from me. Okay. No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Next question, please. Uh, sorry, there is one small problem with the beamer. You can see we're missing a little bit on the left-hand side. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't clip any of the text, but it may seem a little off-center. Anyway. I don't know that can be done before. There's, there's all cables and everything, yes. Wires, no. Let, let's leave it for it is at the moment, so maybe later on. And I, I can talk loud enough for you to not have to read that. Anyway, what I want to do in this presentation is to tell you everything you wanted to know about extended attributes. Well, almost. I won't say I'm an expert. I have run into various problems myself on extended attributes, and that is the main reason I decided to do this presentation. Okay, what I want to do in this presentation is to tell you about the following things. What EAs are, the relationships to the file systems, the various types, uses, pitfalls, standard and common EAs, some utilities, APIs, the structure, and some reference how you can program EAs yourself if you want to. If anything is unclear during the presentation, please just stop me and ask. I might be able to give an answer. Okay, attributes. Now, as you know, we have in most systems various attributes and system, oh, sorry, extended attributes. The standard attributes, as we all know, are system, read-only, archive, and hidden. And these are generally the same in most systems. However, extended attributes are file system features which basically connect metadata to a particular file. Um, there is no real welcome, come inside. Whereas regular attributes have strictly defined by the file system, you can see permissions and records. I'm being adjusted. Thank you. Um, there's something you have to realize that although we talk about extended attributes being applicable to files, a directory is also considered as a file in this respect and can also have extended attributes. In OS2, the number of extended attributes is unlimited. However, there is a maximum size for all EAs per file of 64K byte. Extended attributes you will not only find in OS2, but in AEX, Linux, sometimes it is enabled in the kernel, and any of you that have a NAS and start copying data from OS2 to the NAS might or might not be able to transfer the extended attributes as well. OS2, of course, that is done in the FAT, and that is indirectly done by using the file eadata.sf, which we are all familiar with. In FAT32, as long as you have the option slash EAS enabled, JFS and HPFS. FreeBSD, OSX, Solaris, and would you believe it, even Windows has extended attributes. But just one thing, 
extended attributes are completely different in all systems. There's no commonality. Um, both HPS and JFS EAs are part of the file itself. Part and parcel, so it's one item. For example, uh, EAs associated with a file directly in HPS are stored directly in an F node of the HPS, sorry, HPFS file itself, or if necessary, they are um, larger, they go through a B plus tree. So they add more sectors as required. Um, if you have a look at the extended attribute in fact, the, let me have a look. You see you have first of all the file name, which of course is eight bytes as we're all used to, the extension, three bytes, and the attributes. Then there is something reserved, time, date, fat cluster, and the size. So where are the extended attributes? Oh, back. <laughs> um, well, the fat directory, the reserve entries 12 to 21, is used to point to the EA data. And what is basically done is the last two bytes has a pointer to the cluster on the disk which contain the EAs. This is all very nice, but it does not tell the file system that that area on the disk has been used. Because normally speaking, the clusters that are allocated are marked as being used for the file system. That's why we have a file called EA Data SF. This is actually used to contain the allocation information, so the free space allocation that is used by the EAs themselves. Go a bit to that. Um, there are some little peculiarities. Uh, the EA itself is contained in an additional file because the first one only gave the file allocation for where it is. And the file is, has the extension space EA dot space SF. So for example, if you have a file dot bitmap, on a FAT system, it is written as file.bitmap space EA dot space SF. This file you cannot see from within OS2. The driver will hide it. So if you do a directory listing, you can't find it anywhere. Because the driver says, no, I will hide it. But if you use Windows, sorry, or another operating system, and you look at the FAT directory, you will find this file. Which means you can damage it. Because you don't think it's an EA or anything. You might say, oh, I just clean up the disk. The format of this file has the same or very similar format to the file as created by EAUtil, which you may recognize as the uh, command which allows you to split extended attributes from a file into a separate file or to combine them back. But more on that later. Okay, but what are extended attributes? Why do we need them? Well, for example, you can have the icon of an executable in an extended attribute because you won't find it anywhere else. It's in the EA. The same is the long file name, code page information, all sorts of information you want to store that tells you a little bit more about a file or a directory are in extended attributes. Uh -oh. Yes. 
yes. There are two major types of EAs in OS2. The first one is called critical, and it means if it is not there, something will really not work properly at all. However, I haven't found one yet. Well, the critical uh, part is there is a flag in the EA. As I say, I've scanned, and I know you have the same problem, uh, Greg. We're trying to look for critical EAs. I'm not saying they don't exist, but I haven't found anybody that's found one yet. It's rather like the Loch Ness Monster, you know? And there are non-critical. Non-critical means that the program will still work, but it may be missing something. For example, if the icon in the EA is not there, you will just have on the desktop a blank icon for that particular program. But the program still works. It may be not so nice. Each EA has an identification type or tag. Uh, the reason for this is because EAs are relatively free format, you have to know when you read an EA, how is the data written? How is it composed? Now, to make things nice, some EAs even have EAs in them. So, it's not just simply I can see an EA, but I might see an A having five, six other EAs within that EA, which makes life a little bit complicated, certainly if you want to program this. It's not that nice. Oh, this is all shifted a bit. Anyway, there are a number of predefined types, and they all have the uh, prefix EAT, and it's binary, ASCII, bitmap, meta file, icon, so on and so forth. And what you see here is these are multi-value, multi-typed. So within this EA, you can have a number of these EAs. There's also uh, an ANSI standard, extended attribute, and they all start with the code double F and then something. So when you're decoding an EA, you can see what type it is by looking at this tag. And then you know how the rest of the data is. The name for an EA. Well, we have two types. Basically, the so-called standard extended attribute, or SEA for short, and that name always starts with a dot. If there is a dot, it's a standard extended attribute. But there are, of course, to make life really easy, also free formats. So you can decide on an EA and you can make it up however you like. The stand, well, now I see I've got the wrong, uh, just excuse me a second because this is the wrong presentation. Huh. You see how many I've got? <laughs> uh, let's see if it's this one. <laughs> this one doesn't work.
Okay. That's a little bit better, can shift it. Um, so these are the standard extended attributes. Unfortunately, you can't really see this is in red. Anything with an asterisk are in fact extended attributes that you can manipulate yourself from the VPI. So from the system, you can change these. The icon, you know, you can change easily enough. The others, I will come on to in a few minutes. There are also non-common SEAs, or non-SEAEAs, which you often will find. Uh, for example, if you do any Rex programming, the Rex literal pool, uh, the tokens and so on, are stored also in EAs. I'm not going to go into this in much detail, but you, because to start with, you can't read it from where you are. But I put this all in the presentation, so you can download it afterwards, and it gives you all the information about the various types of standard extended attributes which I've just talked about. For example, the associate table, it tells you exactly how it is formatted and what it in fact does. So I will skip through all these, and you see there's a lot of information on the various formats. So we'll come on to the important things. What can you do with EAs? This is very nice to have something, but if you can't do anything with it, what use is it? Well, <laughs> that looked right, didn't it? Let's go back. Yes, okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see this very well, but for example, here we have the properties of a particular program. And what you see is here the subject, and that is the EA dot subject. You have here a keyword, which is very nice, but the EA is called key phrases, just to help you along on the way. And for example here, comments is the EA dot comments. So here, you can fill this data in yourself and effectively you are creating or deleting or changing an EA. This information, and this is from the contact to program, says, for example, that this is the name and address and telephone database. More information about a program you don't directly find. And for example, this is in both German and English. So you can put this extra information to anything you want. This page is available under the page file. Probably never noticed it. Has anybody used it? I see one head nodding. Okay. So guys, something for you to do. Um, you have another EA which is well known in many respects, and that is the long name EA. Whenever you do a listing using the workplace shell, you see here uh, an icon, title, and real name. Be careful, title and real name. The title is in fact the dot long name, and you see that here on the tab icon, and the real name, which is as the name under the tab file. They are generally the same, but do not have to be. The idea behind the long name is, of course, it can be a lot longer than the standard, for example, in fact, which is only eight plus three. So you can give a more descriptive name. Oh, yes, yes, it can contain carriage returns because you've seen on your desktop something with a name and then a name underneath it. So you can add special characters in it. What happens when you copy EAs? 
Well, you generally don't even notice it. So, copying fi files, EAs are automatically copied when using either the workplace shell or the copy command from the command line or any EA aware program. But which program is EA aware? Some of mine are, and a lot are, but not all. So it's a little bit of suck it and see. Generally, it's not a problem. As I said, most EAs are non-critical. So even if the information doesn't go across, the program will still work. But this is only true when copying if the destination file system supports EAs. If it doesn't, you've got a problem. You lose them. Also, if a file has a long EA and that is edited, sorry, the file is edited and you do a save as option, so you say I have file ABC and I save it as XYZ. It's saved at XYZ, but guess what? The long file name is ABC. So you can get two files with exactly the same long file name, which is great when you're using the workplace shell to find a file. And you say, I'm sure this is a different file than I had. And that's right, it is, because two of them have the same name. Now, if the destination does not su support EAs, what then? The, first of all, the workplace shell doesn't give you an error. It says, I've copied. Great. You can say, well, I'll use the DOS command with the slash F option, and it will tell you it's failed. Great. So you know you didn't copy the extended attributes. I use often as not 4OS2, but it doesn't have a slash F option. So, yeah. Basically, the only true way to find out if an EA has been copied is to check it. So to read the EA afterwards to see if it's there. There are a number of utility programs available. I think everybody knows the programs from Hank Kelder, EA Browse, that's, which is part of WP Tools. That will allow you to look and see what EAs are available. It plays all sorts of EAs on a file-by-file -file basis together with the metadata. It cannot modify any data, however. So if you wanted to change it, you can't do that with EA Browse. You can, however, delete the EA. And you delete an EA just by filling it in with zeros. Oh, sorry, blank. <laughs> I have to be careful what I'm saying now. Um, one of the utility programs I wrote, Search Plus, that does allow you to find files with EAs. It even allows you to find specific EAs and even data in an EA. So if you're looking for a particular bit of EA data, you can find it. Um, I wrote also another program, which is available on Hobbes, by the way, which is the long name check program. And basically what this does is to look for duplicate long file names in the same directory, because that gives you otherwise a possible problem. It allows you to edit the long name or restore the long name if you changed it and you're not sure that that was the right thing to do. It does this by writing an extra EA <laughs> with the replaced data. Um, FM2, originally written by M. Kimes, has an EA viewer in it. And that 
is very powerful. It displays all sorts of EAs again with the metadata. It can modify EA data for ASCII EA types only, um, which is fairly logical. It can add ASCII and multi-view, multi-value ASCII EAs. It does not touch any binary EAs, but the problem mainly with binary EAs you don't know what you should change anyway. If it's an icon, yeah. If you start editing it, you're just changing some of the colors or the positions of various bits. It, of course, can delete any EA. Those are the EA utilities, with one exception. This is the standard utility within uh, the command that you have, the command line. And now I see I've got some, for some reason, my label on the bottom there. Okay. Um, basically, the options are split, join, replace, overwrite, merge, and preserve. Be careful. <laughs> Coffee's arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. If you split the EA, it removes it from the original file and places it in the destination file, in the hold file. Often as not, you think split, oh, I've still got it, and I put it there. No, you have to say preserve. It's a, a, a small mistake you tend to make. You're looking how to do it, it says, okay, split, that's what I want to do, but it takes it away from the original file as well. So in this way, you can just split up EAs from any file or directory. Oi, 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 oi. Come on. <laughs> so, if you're interested, this is the structure of the EA output file. It has the total size of the file, the length of the EA name. So, for example, dot icon is a length of five. The size of that EA, because you can have more EAs, Here is the EA name, and of course, that he knows from the length, how big it is. Then you get the data, where the first byte, first two bytes are the EA type. So is it FFDE, FF something or other, which I showed in the beginning. Then you get the critical, non-critical flag, and the size of this EA. And then you go again, sorry, this is... Then you go repeating this information until all the EAs are finished. That is the format of the file. Questions? Oh, you're all asleep. Okay, good. Some facts. There are no ways to see if an EA, sorry, EA has been changed or deleted. You might think, well, I look at the modification date. It's not changed. The only way is either to see what was there, or maybe if the size of the EAS is changed. But you can, of course, change something without changing its size. You just have to change one character to, the same char uh, to another character, and it has the same size. So you don't know if it's changed, which makes life sometimes a little bit difficult. This is... Come back here. There's an unwritten rule. When an EA is changed or added using the workplace shell, the last write date is unchanged. This is what the workplace shell does. I found out this just by accident. It also does not change the attribute flag, which normally you use to say, hey, this file has changed. I need to make a backup, for example. So you can change all the EAs and use a backup probe when it says there's nothing changed. 
Nice, isn't it? Well, if you're a programmer and you change an EA or you add an EA, you will find it does change the attribute bit and it does change the last file modification date and time. So basically, you have to change it back to be in line with the rest of the system. You're looking uh, worried, David? I'm not lying yet. You haven't noticed it yet? <laughs> okay, thank you. Now, there are a number of APIs available to you as a programmer. Does anybody program here? Yes, we all nod. Yeah, I'm a great programmer. I've done some fantastic stuff. Nobody's seen it, right? Just like me. <laughs> Um, but these are the APIs you can use just to make things easy for you. Um, DOS find first. It can either get the size of an EA or read an EA in, but you need to know which one it is. DOS find next, which is basically to get the next sequence of file you're looking for. Query file information, which again gets the size of the EA, EA data, of a specified EA, so you need to know what you're going to get in first. Query path info is the same, but it uses a path name instead of a file handle. If you want to find out which EAs are available in a file, you have a DOS enumerate, so you just go around in a loop saying, give me the next EA name and everything until there are no more. Then you have, strangely enough, DOS open, which can write EAs, which you think, hey, I'm opening a file and I'm writing EAs, but it's possible. You just have to fill in the right fields to do that. Um, this sort of DOS find first to get and read an EA would be used by a program that's expecting to have a specific EA available for that particular program because it has data that that program needs. So you do it at the moment you open that program or data file. Um, you have DOS set file info and path info to write extended attributes. Um, when you see the word here, query file or path, and here, uh, the point is that file has a handle and path is a real path name which you specify. Now, the problem with a handle is that you can do that using an open, DOS open, but you can only open files. You cannot open a directory. So if you want to do any EA work on a directory, you have to use the set path or, or query path, because then you can say a directory name. Um, I won't go much through this, but this is the way you, in fact, with DOS first find what the information you get. You have a possibility to specify the size of the EAs to get all the EAs that are available. Um, it comes in a, a particular file format buffer. What is interesting is you have to allocate twice the amount of size that you receive here in order to store that information. So you have an EA from for example, 100 bytes, you need to have 200 bytes available in memory. Uh, you can query EAs from a particular list using this, but you have to specify what the EA name is and then it goes into a nice structure. The nice, nastiest thing about EAs is the memory structures that they have. They're a little bit difficult to work with. And that's putting it nicely, right? <laughs> <laughs> you never make mistakes, you just don't write it correctly. Yeah. So that's DOS find first. Query is again the same sort of thing. Uh, enumerate, 
here you just get more information. I, I won't go through all these, they're available in the documentation. Uh, but for example, all of these APIs give, and you can't, there are some, okay, you can see the purple quite easily, and you can, this is red. But basically, these are the various structures, and what you see is there's a commonality part, which is, of course, the standard thing you see, file creation date, time creation, last one. This is standard information that's always returned. Depending on which particular AI API you used, you can get information like where the next offset is. Uh, that is used in uh, DOS find file first, and it tells where the offset to look for the next one and so on. And you get extra information, so as the length of the file name and so on and so forth. So this information just depends a little bit on which particular API you use, but they are more or less the same. Which makes life sometimes easy, but as a programmer you forget sometimes that you're using the wrong um, structure. This is what it looks like in memory, to give you an idea. You've read in to the structure EAOP2, and it's split up into two lists. These lists look identical, they're not quite. Uh, here, you, because you have multiple EAs, you have uh, in this list, for example, the offset to the next EA. Uh, it contains information about the size of the EA and the name. The other part is at the other list, and this is shifted down a bit, but basically this, you've got the offset again, which should be there. Uh, you've got the file extended attribute byte, the name value, the name of the uh, EA, and then the EA data. And this goes on and on and on. So it is a, a, it's not nice to program. Uh, you have to use a lot of casting to do it reasonably nicely, or address manipulation, whichever you prefer. To read an EA is quite simple. You need to get the size, reserve memory, and then enumerate it in a loop, and so you can read the EAs. For writing EAs, reserve memory, put your EA structures in, depending on which particular format you're going to use. There is a thing that the list entry has to be on a double word boundary. If you don't do that, you can get memory uh, exceptions. Oh, one of the things I forgot to say, you can read the size of an EA. You saw that early in one of the options. You can say, what are the size of the EAs? So you think, if I get the size as zero, there are no EAs, correct? That would be logical. Wrong. As long as it's under four, there are no EAs. Small quirk. So if it's more than four, there's EAs. If it's not, there are no EAs. That's a small programming fault I made. And I said, ah, they're always EAs. <laughs> and, they, and then you try and read them, and you can't find them. OK, back again. So you, to write, you reserve memory, fill a structure, and then use write or DOS set file or path to write it. That's the procedure. If you want to know about, more about EA programming, then I suggest you have a look at the art of OS2 programming. Unfortunately, you can't see the link here, but basically, I can't even see it here. Oh, yes, I can. Um, the Russian site has copied the um, book, The Art of OS2 Programming, and you can... <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, how strange they do that. And uh, you can then, uh, via the website, select the various articles you want. So there is, so you can all start typing this one in now to find out this data. You know. But um, okay, you can see that on the printout and in the slides later. Uh, there is also 
encapsulating extended attributes part one and two. This is a part of EDM. You remember EDM? Uh, well, you can look up on EDM2, and there are articles which describe with all the programming details, and I've used it myself basically to be able to do anything with EAs, and it works. Then there is another one which is called uh, extended attributes, what they are and how you can use them, and that is on www.howzat.demon.co.uk, articles 06 May 93 HTML. All got that? Good. But anyway, it's on the presentation. If you want to know more, you can find it there. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? I see. This was a typical case of bullshit battles brains. <laughs> you need a coffee. You need a coffee. Everything I've said is true. Uh, <laughs> To the best of my knowledge, I will say, um, I know a copy of the presentation will be available uh, on the website or something, uh, Roderick? Yes, all, all presentations will be published on the website. So at least you'll be able to read the links and to look them up. I wish you a lot of success with extended attributes. Thank you.